Good afternoon, everybody. So today I wanted to talk to you about what it's like when the narcissist has no insight into your life anymore. You know, you have just cut them out completely. Like you've understood what no contact is like and <clears throat> you've kind of gotten to a point to where you're kind of have made up your mind that there is nothing here. Whether there was something there before, there probably was never anything there, but you've realized the fact that there's most definitely nothing there anymore. And so, you know, once you make amends with yourself, that's the biggest uh, feat that you have to deal with sometimes is, 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 is not convincing yourself because you don't want to try to lie to yourself, but it's coming into an agreement with yourself. And to, to realize also that these people are devious, they're envious, they're uh, just demonic in nature, man. They're just not evil people. How about that? And they have nothing out in there, out there good for you. And so then you start to just, you know, focus on yourself. Maybe you've been discarded or maybe you've discarded yourself. You did the reverse discard or whatever. It doesn't matter where you are as far as that goes. What matters is that you decided that there's no fruit here for you. That when somebody doesn't have your back anymore or never did, and you start to, you know, really have time to dwell on it, you've been beat down and destroyed and demolished several times and, and you know that there's no love that nobody, that person whoever it is, that narcissist never had any love for you and maybe you didn't want to believe it in the beginning but you know after several beat downs you know say spiritually mentally, you know and emotionally uh, being mocked, being almost you know spiritually spit on you know, how much do you do you give before you decide that this is it, this is over, you know? And you cross that, there is a line of demarcation where, you know, it's like you're done. And so you start to go inside, you heal, and, you know, the narcissist really focused on, you know, gaining new supply, gaining fuel when they leave you. They're used to always coming back to you. And then, you know, they're, they're kind of distracted. And that's a good thing, whether you might have wanted them or whatever. But because they were distracted with all other source of supply, new supply, whatever supply, that you were able to, you know, heal, you know, and get further down that line of healing before they were to come back because they forgot about you, you know, because they were distracted, they were happy, they were getting their needs met, whatever, temporarily. And you were utterly destroyed, so you had no fuel to give anyway, and they knew that. And you know, in the beginning of a discard, they may know they're coming back, but in the very beginning, they treat you so bad because they really feel in their heart that they're done with you. Whether you reverse discard or whatever, you're still gonna hear their lip. But, you know, they're used to you being part of their assembly line, part of their backup, you know, their backup plan. You know, that's, that's the truth. You know, they're used to being hooked up to you. Once they get you hooked, they used to used to depending on your fuel to to your your supply to fuel them. Whether it's they're with you or not through triangulation, through uh, watching you and stalking you. And a lot of times when they stalk you, it's just just to hopefully see that you're destroyed. And then they they get some, they get fuel off that, knowing that they're living a better life than you. And it was once in reverse where you were living a better life than them when they first met you. And they love what they have done to you, what they have turned you into. And so when they see that, they get victory and they just keep it moving. They don't even have to say anything to you. They can just view you. They know you're down. They can know. They see. And in their instinctive mode, they know more than we know. I mean, in that instinct mode, they can see a lot more just by one viewing of you. But they're evil in nature. You're just an essential part of their well-functioning as their supply. And when you shut that pipeline down, they know it. They know it. And they need people to uplift them. You know, they don't have... They can't go inside and they can't... They can't uh, be resourceful at all. You know, they, they, the narcissist, 
needs you for their supply system for their well functioning well their or their well-being that's why i always say you're like the red cross to them you're the one that's giving them blood sweat and tears you're the one fueling them you're the one they have to stop at that fuel that gas station to fuel up with that high-end test fuel and if you're not there no more then they don't know how to act they don't know what to do because they're falling apart and that's typically when they come to you when they're already falling apart things aren't going well for them they need that fuel and they just have no ability to go inside and to be resourceful they they have to get you to validate them they cannot validate themselves they have no internal resources that's why they have to go externally to get everything they are aloof they are they have they have no inside nature to build themselves up you can't build yourself up with under an evil construct when you're only doing evil to people and you're using people and lying to people what happens is they've been fake for so long and you know fake is to always mimic and to, to lie and when you operate in that construct then there's nothing inside but the outside lie and that's constantly what they're doing and if you think about it's interesting how you know, we always say that like light, there's light and there's darkness, that the enemy sends these people out to draw off your light. And it's interesting because it's like hell is dark and it's like inky blackness and, and heaven is full of light. It's almost like when they fell from heaven and the narcissist decided to go down the route of following the enemy Satan, the loser, that god shut that god turned the power off y'all and and the only way they can turn the lights on is is through you through using and abusing you from stealing any of your goodness and goodness comes from your traits goodness comes from the fuel that you have invested in the people to help them that all turns into good fruit and they come by and they want to scoop up every piece of fruit that you have and then they replace it with uh, infected fruit something may look like good fruit but it ain't good fruit it, it's it's uh, full of infection and so they just have no substance and that's why a lot of times they will stalk you they will stalk you because they need to see if they can come back if you're fueled up if you're fueled up and you're living a better life than them and they're down and they're down and out on fuel they're going to try to come back they're going to try to pry themselves back into your life and say anything they can to get you when you are lit are down and out when they come by to see you they know that they've destroyed you they'll keep it keep it moving they can only they can only um regulate themselves through their supply sources whether it's past supply current supply or future supply through their family and their flying monkeys that's why they're always in competition with everybody because they want everybody to be down and if they're up then it's time for them to come back and push you back down and that's why the only way that this relationship will end or these situationships end is when you say no when you turn them down when you turn their back your back on them and you treat them as if they're dead to you because they're pieces of shit so when you see them stalking know that it's just one of a few things uh, they're in awe of your aura they're in awe of your energy they wish they were you they want to copy you and they want to see if your fuel is, is still down from them to their destruction that they have applied to your life if it's if it's elevating back up and they haven't been with you in a while if you're happy if you're in another relationship if you're moving on they got to try to sabotage that destroy that get back in and on that because they can't have that because they're always going to be jealous and envious of you because they do not have an internal generator like you do they have nothing inside they have to take everything from the outside and to get it from the outside they have to get you to push your energy out so they can grab it and switch with you when you when you get into reactive abuse with them and you push your energy out when you're explaining to them and and you're giving them passion it pushes your energy outside your body 
and they grab it and they switch with you. And see, they again, they have to get it from the outside of the body. So don't react, respond, observe, and don't absorb. And that will save you a lot. But the devil's in the details. And if you're wondering if these think these guys are possessed, I mean, just think about this. What does the devil, what does a demon do? They're known for, um, they are known for tormenting people. Okay, so what does the demon do? It torments. What does the narcissist do? They torment. It doesn't matter which degree of narcissist you're talking about. They all act in the operation of tormenting you. So the number one sign that somebody is demon possessed is that they are a tormentor of mankind and of somebody that has a good light. So if you can give me a like, subscription, thumbs up, I love y'all, peace. And stand tall, soldier, we out.